Item number 47 is a council member call for review. Uh, one, adoption of resolution certifying the final environmental impact report with associated findings of fact in the mitigation, monitoring, and reporting program. Two, adoption of resolution approving general plan amendment to change the land use designation of APN 159-090-51 and APN 161-030-19 from a state B residential to medium density A residential, medium density B residential for PA3, and open space for lots A, B, and C. Three, introduction of an ordinance for zone amendment to change the zoning designation of APN 161-030-20 from neighborhood commercial to commercial professional for PA1. Four, introduction of an ordinance for zone amendment to change the zoning designations from residential estate B with a scenic park overlay for PA2, PA3, and the OS areas to a zoning designation for planned development with a scenic park overlay. And five, adoption of a resolution approving tentative map, development plan, and conditional use permit for a planned development consisting of 33 single family homes, 268 townhome suite, townhome units, a two story 20,000 square foot commercial building, and creation of 34.11 acres of permanently conserved open space for a 70.65 acre site located at the northeastern and northwestern corners of Melrose Drive and Oceanside Boulevard, West Bobbier Drive, and within the Peacock neighborhood planning area, Melrose plus Oceanside, applicant CWC Land Investments LLC. And we will open the public hearing at 9:10. We will open the public hearing and start with disclosures. Uh, I've had staff and maybe two um, two of the public been by the site many times. Staff, um, the applicant, and a little bit from the community. Staff, the applicant, and four members of the public that I've talked to. Staff, the applicant, um, and members of the public, yes. Uh, staff, applicant, public, um, so take it away. All materials right, and I did get some emails yeah. in opposition. That's All materials have been provided to the council. You may begin. All right. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Weiss, Deputy Mayor Lowry, distinguished council members. Richard Greenbauer in the planning division here to present the uh, Melrose Plus Oceanside project. Um, we have a number of items this evening to uh, go over. The applicant and a majority of the people in attendance this evening are their uh, professional that they brought with them regarding the environmental document as well as the analysis prepared. And they do have a uh, somewhat significant presentation, so I'm going to shorten mine up to the extent feasible, um, but provide some overview for the public in attendance this evening. The uh, item in front of you tonight is a, a general plan amendment, two zone amendments, a development plan, tentative map, and conditional use permit in order to create a plan development plan over 70 acres. Um, the plan development plan would uh, create three plan areas and consist of horizontal mixed use on the uh, northwest side of Melrose and Oceanside Boulevard with uh, strictly residential being located on the northeast side of Melrose and Bowie Air Drive. Um, as I previously stated, the total of 33 single family homes would be constructed, 268 town homes, and a two story, 20,000 square foot commercial retail building on the corner of Oceanside Boulevard and uh, Melrose. Approximately 34 uh, acres of the 70 acres will be preserved as natural open space. Um, the project's been in, in process for over five years due to agency habitat concerns. The applicant originally started this project with over 700 dwelling units after taking direction at a workshop. Um, they've uh, revised that to a mi horizontal mixed use type project and are bringing forward what's in front of you this evening. Um, the three items that will, or five items that will be required tonight will be approval or certification of the environmental impact report, um, approval of the general plan amendment, introduction of two ordinances for zone amendments, and then approval uh, upholding the Planning Commission's action to approve the tentative map development plan and conditional use permit. Uh, I've got an existing conditions map. You can see a uh, number, uh, kind of the uh, location of the property immediately adjacent to the city of Vista. 
um, denoting that uh, recent development in the area included close to uh, 700 dwelling units and apartments along Bobier and uh, Sports Parkway and on the southwest side of uh, Melrose and Oceanside Boulevard across from the Sprinter Station. Um, we do have some multifamily to the west of the horizontal area, plan area that's proposed. And then, uh, as I had stated, 34 acres, where majority of the habitat you can see on the north portion of the project are being uh, maintained in, per in uh, permanent open space, including a lot of the rock outcroppings that you see out there today. Here's a brief overview of uh, the what's being requested tonight. The uh, zone amendment to change from neighborhood commercial to uh, commercial professional is just to make it consistent with the general plan and provide an underlining zoning of commercial for what is uh, referred to as plan area one. And then on the northeast side, you'll see plan area two and plan area three where the residential will occur. Um, listening to the concerns of the general public in the area, uh, Plan Area 2 is solely dedicated for 33 single-family homes on small lots, but providing a transition and buffer to the uh, more dense townhome products to the uh, south. Once again, we've uh, highlighted the plan areas, uh, showing the acreage and the zoning, and then the uh, what's being requested, going to a medium density type zoning for the uh, northeast portion and uh, medium type density for the horizontal mixed use on the uh, northwest side. Here's an illustrative uh, site plan, kind of showing the layout of the uh, townhome, uh, fiveplex, fourplex, sixplex configuration, uh, townhomes that will be constructed as part of the project, and denoting on the uh, northwest corner the uh, commercial retail, which will have a kind of a public plaza immediately um, to the north of the Arco station there with a uh, suitable amount of uh, public infrastructure and improvements to the bike lanes, pathways around the surrounding area. Moving on, um, we can, this next image is showing all the open space and pedestrian circulation. So uh, working with staff over the last five years, we've modified this plan uh, numerous times, reducing the number of units each time in order to accommodate buffer areas from Elise Belverio and the endangered species habitat uh, to the northeast, and then uh, making sure there's ample pedestrian ways so they can get access to the uh, sports park complex. Overall, the architecture was reviewed by the Planning Commission. Um, it consists of a a variety of Spanish style, Monterey style architectures and the uh, townhomes in this illustrative shows the 78 townhomes that would be part of the horizontal mixed use and kind of uh, denoting exactly what style of architecture. So it's intermixed throughout the project site. So it's not to, so to break up the monotony of just one certain type of architecture. Moving on to the uh, 33 single family homes in plan area two. Once again, we have a, a combination of architectural styles on smaller lots, but yet using a lot of uh, richness and materials uh, to bring forward a, a, a nice project for that area. And then moving on to plan area three, um, the applicant has uh, listened to staff's concerns. They've integrated the project into the natural topography um, to the extent feasible, lowered it below Bobier. So the, uh, the roofs of the, L, of the uh, three stories will be pushed up into the hillside, then the two stories will go out towards the vista as you look uh, to the northeast across Guahomey Regional Park. With that, staff recommends that the uh, City Council adopt the resolution certified in the Environmental Impact Report with the MMRP and the findings of fact. Um, introduce two ordinances for the zone amendments and then adopt a uh, resolution upholding the Planning Commission's action to approve the tentative map development plan and conditional use permit. And that concludes staff's presentation. I'm available for any questions. Great. At this time, the applicant may come forward, provide their testimony if they wish to do so. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Ken Ryan with KTGY. I know it sounds like a radio station, but we are architects and planners 
Uh, I have a brief presentation for you, for you this evening. Um, thank you for your service to your community. I know firsthand what that really means. I know it's been a long day, so we are going to keep our presentation brief. It does highlight the five plus years that we've worked on this project with our team, with your staff, with you, and with your community. Um, your staff's done a great job. We uh, concur with the staff report, the analysis that's before you tonight, in agreement with all your conditions of approval. Tonight with me is uh, Dan Niebaum with Lightfoot Planning. He's here to answer any questions along with myself as well as all of our key team members are here this evening should that be necessary. Um, it's also uh, an honor for us to be working with California West too, uh, who have a great reputation here in this region, in the San Diego area, not just because of the good work they're doing, but because they believe philosophically in engaging with the community and listening to the community and responding to the community. And that's what we've done. That's what's before you tonight. You know where the site is located at Oceanside and Melrose. Um, I think one of the things early on that we really paid attention to was not just the site itself, but was uh, also thinking about great places are about context. And certainly in this region, we have the Vista Sports Park, the Sprinter Station, the Peacock neighborhood, existing open space. We wanted to pay attention to that and make sure that our project was integrated and responded to the setting overall. We have had a lot of work with your community. Back in January 2013, California West purchased the property. And uh, as your staff's indicated, our original proposal was 700 units. I'll come back to that. Uh, we had workshops with your planning commission, with yourselves, and heard a couple of things. One was, think about, uh, is there some, not just residential, but could we incorporate some job creating uses uh, within the site? Could we perhaps lower the densities and reevaluate and come up with a project that still makes sense but reduce the densities? And could we do some, um, some planning that would you know, emphasize and take advantage of the site's location to the Sprinter sta Station? So we spent a lot of time doing that with our team and with your community. We noticed your community as well as your neighbors in Vista. This graphic illustrates the required 1,500 foot uh, designation, that little yellow line is the required by law designation, but you know, we went beyond that. If there was a line that came through the middle of a neighborhood, don't cut it off at that line. So you see everything that's colored in yellow, uh, we noticed in your city, and we also noticed your neighbors in Vista and uh, felt that was the right thing to do. We mailed introduction letters. We, uh, overall, with our workshops, we sent out 1,900 invitations. We usually had about 40 folks show up, and they gave us great input that we paid attention to and incorporated into the plan that's before you uh, this evening. Uh, one of the significant um, elements of this plan is we have 34 acres of preserved open space, and that's actually land that currently is designated in your general plan for residential development. And I'll show you a graphic in a moment that highlights that, but we think that's significant. As part of our revisions of the plan, we backed off in some er areas where neighbors had concerns where proposed development was, but the plan before you today adds 34 acres of open space from what is currently designated for residential development in your general plan. The other significant change that's in front of you, and this has evolved over five years, is we've gone from 700 units to 301 units that's before you today of attainable housing, a variety of housing, not all the same. So here's what we heard. We heard, think about gateway commercials as we come into your community. Um, incorporate open space in a meaningful way. Focus on traffic. We heard a lot of folks talk about traffic and our consultant and our team and your staff and uh, everybody involved, your environmental consultant. Uh, we have mitigation measures that improve traffic in this area. We're uh, excited to share that with you tonight. We also um, heard, uh, think about context, about balancing landscape with hardscape. Make it walkable, um, provide for meaningful connections in terms of pedestrian orientation as well as uh, bicycles, and pay attention to the environment from an environmental setting perspective. What we did was just that. We provided a gateway corner element of uh, job creating commercial and office uses, but not just a use, actually providing a gateway to your community at that location that's a, a strong public uh, realm. We uh, incorporated open space into the property that uh, I just mentioned a moment ago, and we provided for significant traffic mitigation measures, adding and making uh, Melrose expanded to four travel lanes in addition to uh, additional traffic improvements. We've exceeded our parking requirements, and we looked at the context and character very carefully in terms of the setting itself and how uh, the property uh, relates to open space and to our neighbors. 
We made the project walkable, significant trails internally uh, and connecting externally to your trail system that you have in place, providing bicycle connections, and looking very deeply at environmental conditions, making sure that we were dealing with water conservation and uh, minimizing impacts uh, to the environment, and also uh, providing a plant palette with our landscape architect, uh, incorporating drought-tolerant landscaping in native California plant materials as part of our palette. So here's what's currently proposed. Your general plan on the left shows the estate residential area in yellow, uh, the prof uh, professional commercial is part of our site, and what's being proposed before you today is the, the professional commercial, which is a combination of uh, office and commercial and residential uses and clustered residential with the additional 34 acres of open space that, as you can see on your current general plan, is designated for residential development. We think that's significant. Our uh, zoning, as uh, Richard, your staff's indicated, is consistent with that. It's proposed tonight. And here's the plan. And the real focus on this plan was thinking about great communities. They're activated. There's a strong public realm. There's a relationship to the context. There's certainly functionality. But there's also town features and elements that uh, provide a, uh, opportunities for discovery and for understanding and for serenity and for activity. Every one of our planning areas uh, we've paid attention to that within the overall community. So Plan Area 1, which is our gateway corner uh, uh, down here at Oceanside and Melrose, includes 10,000 square feet of office, 10,000 square feet of commercial, and 78 townhomes. Uh, planning Area 2 is our single-family neighborhood, and that area used to extend further to the north. Uh, we listened to our neighbors and, and uh, reduced that planning area and provided for single-family residential. The original plan had higher density residential in that area, so that's our single-family neighborhood, 33 homes. Plan Area 3 is a mix of two- and three-story townhomes. As your staff indicated, we've used uh, Hunsaker as our engineer on this project and have taken advantage of the grade. Don't force the grade. So it slopes down towards that open space from Beaubier, and we're providing for great vistas for the residents within this area, but also uh, minimizing uh, that from the street edge. So it sits down and takes advantage of the natural topography. And then lastly, our open space area of uh, 34 acres for the total project. Those are the, the four primary elements of the plan. Those 34 acres that I mentioned, changing from residential to permanent open space, we uh, have conditions that require that that endowment uh, be established. Uh, this would be managed and maintained by folks such as the San Diego Habitat Conservancy or an entity similar to that. We've had conversations with them thus far, and so that area will be protected. We've had many, many, many meetings with the resource agencies and those folks involved in that. And, and the development area itself has a 100-foot buffer between the homes and the habitat area that's been incorporated into our land planning. Great placemaking is not um, just an abstract notion of aesthetics. Uh, we believe that it's actually uh, about creating places where people want to be. And that starts with first impressions and, uh, and has a heart and soul to it. And every one of our planning areas, if you look at the land plan, provided for significant entries. This is GMP, our landscape architect. Uh, beautiful entries coming into Plan Area 1, Plan Area 2, Plan Area 3. All three of those arrive on an open space element. We think this site has that type of topography and relationship to the open space that should be incorporated internally within the project as well. We also think there's a strong public realm opportunity and a gateway to your community. This is the corner right at Melrose and Oceanside. So not just have a commercial building, but have a true gathering place that's safe, that's visible, that provides for, you know, you have a cup of coffee or easy connections to the Sprinter station. And then every one of our open space also has a variety of different uses. They're not all the same. So whether that's a barbecue overlook or a gathering place or recreation area, I think there's a reason that you would want to walk in this area and connect uh, within the neighborhoods. These are just a couple of images that show how that would feel. This is proceeding west at the corner of Oceanside and Melrose, so that plaza and that public realm with uh, the mixed use of uh, office and open space connected to the residence, which also allows for uh, some mixed use opportunity within the residence itself. Within that Plan Area 1, uh, as Richard indicated, are 78 townhomes. Plan Area 2 are 33 single family homes. Uh, at Plan Area th uh, 3, the mix of two-story and three-story townhomes, all of it being very walkable. 
and this is our trail system, we paid attention to internal walkability, make that interesting and functional, but also connect to your significant uh, trail system that you have that's adjacent to us. So we know that we're providing for connections to the Sprinter Station, not just for our new residents, but also for the residents in this area. Uh, today, so connecting to the Santa Fe Trail and Vista Sports Park, et cetera, were important elements that we took into consideration. Lastly, and this was maybe the first thing that we heard, think about traffic. Uh, we have some significant mitigation measures that are incorporated into the plan. Uh, first and foremost is expanding North Melrose Drive to four lanes between Santa Fe and between Sagewood and between Meadowbrook and between Oceanside Boulevard will be expanded to four lanes. That triples the capacity on North Melrose. It increases the level of service per your EIR from F to B between Santa Fe and Sagewood. And uh, we have also have a number of improvements uh, that we've worked very hard on with your staff and all the technical consultants at that intersection. A second southbound turn lane, a third southbound through lane, a right turn for a northbound approach to make that uh, function much better. We're also providing for the right of way in the future, should the city want to do that, to go to six lanes on Melrose. So that's been incorporated in our planning process as well. We can come back to any of these details should you have any questions that's here today to go over. I think probably the, the strongest graphic uh, here uh, as an overview is to show this is what the segment would look like, the south segment at Oceanside and Melrose of two, two lanes in each direction, four lanes, but not just function, but make it look beautiful. So we have a landscaped medium and landscaped edges with meandering sidewalk on both sides. And we've also provided for the four lanes on the north segment. Lastly, uh, not just these improvements uh, at Oceanside and Melrose, but the EIR also required, and we're satisfied with uh, providing for this. We've also are contributing our 33 fair percent fair share to the addition of a third southbound lane on Melrose between Ascot and Vista Way, and we're also um, will be providing for uh, bicycle safety improvements uh, near the 76 uh, up in that area. So, in conclusion, we're establishing 34 acres of open space that's currently designated for residential development. That prime corner is a gateway opportunity from a design perspective as well as from providing for a balance of jobs and houses. We're creating uh, and widening uh, Melrose Drive, tripling its capacity, trail connections, completing uh, the ability for our neighbors to actually make connections to the Sprinter Station. And we responded to our neighbors in terms of transitioning from higher density to single family adjacent to those single family neighborhoods. And Mr. Mayor and council members, uh, we're here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. We have uh, four speakers on this item. Uh, Ernie Cowan, Marco Lunemann, <coughs> Thomas Thompson, and Rod Freeman. If he called your name, if you could please come up to the podium and be ready to speak. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, uh, Council Members, my name is Ernie Cowan. I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs at the San Diego, North San Diego Association of Realtors. Uh, represent about 5,000 professional real estate per, uh, members in North San Diego County, about 1,000 of whom live and or practice here in the city of Oceanside. I wish I could say I had 40 people to speak tonight, but due to the late hours, some of them have wandered off. Uh, and those that are left, raise your hand, in the interest of your time, have decided that I'll make the only comments, so um, I'll save you from, from that. Um, I'm here tonight basically to uh, ask the council to go ahead and proceed with the Melrose Plus project. You know, we re we've reviewed this. We, we have traditionally been kind of silent on projects, but our 5,000 members realize that we have a significant housing shortage in North San Diego County. And it's time that we step up and, and let our voices be heard when good projects come along like this. And we have broader concerns, and some of it you heard about tonight. Um, there is a housing crisis. It's not just a, a need. There is a crisis. Our 5,000 members every day deal with young, middle-aged, and older real estate clients who can't find what they need. They can't find starter homes. They can't find move-up homes. They can't find move-down homes for people who wish to retire and perhaps scale back, simply because the housing ladder is broken. We are focusing on low-income or very high-income homes, and projects like this that provide a mix, good mix of housing are just simply not being built. Um, the other thing that 
concerns us is every year we go as a group to Sacramento, and we just got back in May, where 5,000 realtors th from throughout the state of California wandered the halls of the Capitol to visit every legislative office to talk about real estate issues. Uh, there is real movement to take local control away from city councils. And we are concerned this project, this property isn't going to sit vacant. And you've got two choices. A project like this that's really well made and well designed, or God forbid, what we heard about earlier, density bonus projects that will allow up to 35% density bonus without your jurisdictional control. So uh, I've got more, but that's ba basically it in a nutshell. Thank you for the opportunity, and, and we hope you, su you support this project tonight. Hello, Rod Freeman, resident, 1403 East View Court, 92056. I actually live near the affected property. This will be shocking, but I'm a resident that's actually in favor of it. Um, one thing I noticed, and I kind of reiterate his comments, when I look at housing as we develop in California, developers only build homes that start at 3,000 square feet, have travertine and granite, and start at $650,000. This one does include that middle ground, like he pointed out, the townhomes are how you start out when you're young. When I got my engineering degree, I first lived in a townhome. I didn't move right into a single family development. The setting aside of the open space is an added bonus, and the planning looks good. Um, as far as I can see, having lived here since only 2005, so I'm relatively new, um, this development seems to meet the city and the residents at least halfway. It's the best plan I've seen put forth for this property in the time I've been here. So unless there's a reason to deny it, I can't see why you wouldn't move forward with this project. Thank you. Thomas Thompson or Marco Lunamont? Uh, I see none. So, oh, you're going to yield? Oh, thank you very much. All right, so no more speakers on this item. Oh, actually, wait one moment. This was a public hearing item, and uh, if someone did not turn in a form, they are welcome to speak, so I just want to make sure I made that comment. Okay. We'll close the public hearing, and Councilmember Kern. Thank you. Um, thanks for the architecture. As long as it's not Urban Gill inspired, I'm with it, so I'm, I'm happy about that. The only thing, and I, I guess, I, I'm a little bit disappointed, and I expressed this before, is that there's not enough density here it's so close to a sprinter stop. You know, that, that, you know, we talk about densifying around transportation nodes, but I, I think the planning process for this actually started before there was a sprinter, so, or, or right when the sprinter was coming in. So I, I think this is a, a, a good project and, and a good compromise. I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more density because you know we don't have the opportunity to build so close to sprinter stops. But it, it, this it is what it is, and I'm going to move approval. Deputy Mayor Lowry. Thank you, Mayor. So I appreciate all the details that staff and the uh, developer has brought in for us this evening. This is, it's all starting to blend together here after I don't know how many hours. But um, I think it's really important that when we have a, a new community propose new housing that we really take a look at how it fits in with the rest of the environment. And uh, dedicating 34 acres to op open space, that's a, that's a forever dedication because it goes into habitat. And we will have that to look forward to as long as people care about what we have here currently right now. I think the proximity to the sprinter and the fact that you've created, I mean, people can ride their bikes up the hill over to the sprinter, and when they get home at night all tired, they can ride the bike, roll the bike right back down and go home. I think that's an excellent concept that we really need as a community is that more access to already built infrastructure including the transportation and I I hope that this uh, the commercial elements work out because this is a really good space as far as Oceanside is concerned to capture people who want something a little bit different who are coming from Vista or people in Oceanside who are aware that this is a neighborhood or a walkable community that they can visit maybe they want to stop by some of those opening spaces that you've developed in there and, and made a part of your proposal. So I think it's really important what you've done. I appreciate that you are planning to carry over the native, native palette, which is what's surrounding the property right now, 
within the internal landscaping. So I was glad that the uh, proponents, the developer, decided to meet with me to show me what exactly were the details that I was concerned with, and I support this project as it is now, and thank you. Councilmember Feller. Thank you. Um, Sergio, oh no, that's the other one. Don't ask a question. Don't ask a question. Don't ask a question. Richard. <laughs> I apologize for all the breaks I've been taking. I had a pretty good surgery uh, about three weeks ago, and um, things aren't working as much a, as well as I, I wish, so I apologize for needing to take a break. Um, did Vis Vista know, notice us when they jammed 700 units in uh, next to the sports park? Correct. There's, uh, they always do uh, courtesy um, reviews of their environmental documents, and same was done with this project. Well, no, I meant when they did it. Did, Correct. Because w these poor guys are building the road all the way to Highway 78, uh, or, or contributing their fair share. Did, did VISTA do something like that with us? Uh, Council Member Feller, I can't speak to uh, what requirements were placed upon them. I was not part of that project management or review of that document. We do have transportation engineering in attendance. Um, they might have more insight into that. that I'll let Mr. Amberson. I, I should have asked this ahead of time, and I apologize. But uh, Good evening, Council Member Feller, Honorable Mayor, Member of City Council, John Amberson, Transportation Division. Uh, this is the first time that we have had a requirement from the City of Vista to contribute any towards any planned widening of South Melrose. Uh, this is a project that was identified as part of their capital improvements program, and uh, they have plans to widen the roadway north of Vista Way, and so this project is going to contribute to that because of level service impacts. But they didn't, we didn't impose anything like that on their project, their 700 units that they built? No. That's too bad we get sacked again. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this unit, this project goes way back. Uh, Ali Shapuri and his whole crew um, 17, 16, 17 years ago, so uh, uh, Colucci had the had the property at the time, and uh, they had a, I mean, they had shopping centers and um, a lot of units built all the way down onto uh, onto that open space. Uh, and when I saw the project, I thought, gosh, it seems like they could get a little more out of this, and I I. I, I kind of wish they would, much for the same reason as Jerry. Uh, but I, I just, I think it's going to be terrific. They're, they're fixing uh, Melrose all the way down to Santa Fe, and, and I think that's, that's a great addition. Uh, I, I appreciate the openness with, with uh, the community and, and getting their input. Uh, I think they've done a great job to, to put this together, and uh, I look forward to seeing it get built. Councilmember Sanchez. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the presentation by the applicant, um, and I think I voice my concerns to you. Um, bottom line is that it is very challenging because of the topography. Um, it, it just I was hoping to see more in terms of the connection um, to the Sprinter. It doesn't feel very pedestrian friendly at all. Um, there's really no connectivity between the three planning areas. You know, the, the plaza, for example, was described as a, a place where people could gather for all three of the planning areas, and I just can't imagine people hiking up to the top. I, I did also mention that I thought that the, plan, that the plaza 
was probably in the worst possible place because that's probably where most of the traffic would be stalling, would be going. And so basically, how do you deal with the noise and air pollution of the cars in a plaza? Um, I know you talked about maybe doing something in terms of landscaping to try to make it a little quieter. Um, F to B. Uh, the improvements that were described were basically um, making the um, road wider um, to include from you know one lane each way to two lanes each way, and possibly the report the staff report says someday maybe three lanes each way. Um, unfortunately, I think that that is a real problem with this. That the wider the road, the less pedestrian friendly it is. And um, I mean, I kept saying, well, how do you cross the street? I mean, if you're really going to have this connectivity, if you're going to have this kind of um, sense of you know, walkability, which is what we really need to be focused on, is pedestrian, um, uh, bicycle friendly. And this just doesn't do that. The one way in, one way out on that road, um, I really feel it should have been either a, a, a light, a traffic light, or a stop sign. Um, because of the, again, the topography and, and the hill, it's going to invite people to speed. That's always been my concern about this particular roadway on Melrose, is that it's a speedway. You know, it looks like it, you know, it's like, yeah, let me just go fast. And so the way it is now, you've got all this, um, all the striping to try to get the sense that you know it's a narrower road and therefore to try to cut down on that kind of speeding i mean i have to you know consciously drive at a lower speed because it just feels like gee look at this road it's so nice and wide of course um i don't usually go during the traffic time big traffic time so um so that I, ha I heard some from some from the members of the public regarding the right turn in, right turn out. They you know they really wanted to have some way of of being um, of having either a light or a stop sign. Um, and I guess that's it. Um, um, I, I, well, actually, I would have liked to see more commercial. I mean, bottom line is there was all of this real opportunity to create jobs and 10,000 square feet of office and 10,000 square feet of com uh, other commercial is just, I don't think it's good enough. Um, it's 78 homes in that in planning area one, 78, um, and just a little bit of commercial. I would have liked to have um, had more commercial because we really need those jobs and that is what our economic development um, um, future plan, I mean, our, our plan, our, our, what, what is our need? It's the biggest need is for jobs. So um, I did like the, the notion, and I did say that, I, you know, I, I would be happy with a higher density if we were to preserve um, acreage, um, but it just doesn't have that connectivity. It just doesn't have, and I think that there are different ways of, of achieving that. So. Um, I am disappointed that we didn't get that, get, didn't get there, the walkability. And again, topography is really bad. When we talked about the project that, in it, that came once before for the shopping center on the you know, caddy, uh, caddy corner from the planning area one, that was a problem. How do you connect it? You know, how do you get people across the street from the Sprinter? It's almost impossible. So. Um, those are my concerns, and um, you know, it's like I like the project, maybe 50%, and the other 50% is, man, I think we could have done a better job. Thank you. Councilmember Kern? No, she brought up a good point, but if we leave the road narrow, then we can defer the Melrose improvements to Santa Fe to Spur. We could do it that way. But anyway, thank you. Deputy Mayor Lowry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, can the... Um, Applicant, tell me how much time you actually spent on this design. Maybe how many dollars you spent. Five years. How how many, maybe tell my client how much money we spent. On, we spent uh, six years on this, five years with you, uh, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know, the client probably had, will tell you more than that in terms of buying the property, doing all the planning. 
a big part of it, it I was sincere about that was listening to your community and trying to find that balance right. and uh, you know I recognize that there's there is a balance there uh, but we spent hours and hours of revising the plan not just not just to make changes but actually to still fundamentally go back to our key design principles incorporate from a contextual perspective listen to our neighbors be smart about the market understand and, and I hear different voices there but it, it, it's um, there is four different real product types here and we do think there's uh, attainability uh, from entry-level townhomes to single-family we think that creates variety in a healthy community it's not all the same and um, and I just I guess I sort of uh, it's a challenge when you're balancing roadway widening and pedestrian orientation but the one comment I would make is we paid attention to that not just widen streets but actually people do slow down when you see trails next to the roadway when you see rather than undeveloped land you see pedestrian orientation one of the reasons we had that gateway element on the corner is it shows a sense of activity and it's uh, human nature when you're driving if there's undeveloped area and it looks like no man's land you know we all go a little faster but when you see activity, you see crosswalks, and you see it as a pedestrian place, uh, it <coughs> tends to help. Um, we also listened to our experts. We had Lynn Scott Long Greenspan and your staff and all of the traffic experts study it in great detail. Um, so that we spent hours and hours relative to pedestrian transportation architecture, landscape architecture, and the land planning. And you did. Uh, you had a whole list of community outreach. Uh, events that you did also. We did, that we did. An and I, you know, page. I tell I we really did enjoyed it. We had okay. really good input. You, you, as you know, firsthand, this is not a shy community. People tell you what they, what they think. Yeah. And uh, I think that there's no crazy ideas. You try to find balance and then be honest with people and tell them whether it works or whether it doesn't and, and try to respond to that. And we, uh, I'm, I'm proud of working with this client because they believe in that. So we made some changes and some significant ones where we had development earlier and we backed off because of listening to our neighbors. So, Thank you. Yeah. I also want to acknowledge our staff for paying attention to what the needs of the city happen to be within these, these kinds of projects because if I had to spend all the hours and the years that were spent on this, I wouldn't be able to read the thousands of pages of documents that we were forced to read over a period of time. I can simply meet with staff, ask them what's going on here, what the concerns are, review the summaries, and then move forward. But we can also use our own critical thinking and judgment and realize whether or not these things are proposal elements are actually going to work out or if it's just going to be candy on top of the project. So I believe that this is an excellent project. I really like how many different featured spaces there are in this and I think this adds a great deal to the community that we need in that part of Oceanside. So I wanted to thank you for that. Mr. Mullen. So we have a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk. Yes. Okay. So this I'll title the ordinances. This is the introduction of an ordinance of the City of Oceanside amending the zoning designation for certain rail property located on the northwest corner of Melrose Drive and Oceanside Boulevard, APN 16103020, from Neighborhood Commercial CN to Commercial Professional CP as the underlying zone plan, uh, zoning for plan area PA1 of the plan development PD28 plan area. And then we also have a separate ordinance <clears throat> Bear with me, it's kind of long. This is the introduction of an ordinance of the City of Oceanside amending the zoning designation for certain real property located on the northeast corner of Melrose Drive and West Bobier Drive, APN 1590951 and 16103019 from residential estate B with scenic park overlay to a zoning designation of plan development with a scenic park overlay and establishing development standards within the PD plan serving as a regulating document for the plan development PD-28 plan area. Please vote. Motion approved, 4-1, Sanchez, no. Item 49. Uh, there are no speakers on item number 49. Are there any general council member comments? Then we will adjourn to 3.30 Wednesday, August 8th. <laughs>